Scott, thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate the time. And, and the book, too, uh, the, the Ten Commandments, Still the Best Moral Codes, uh, it's a good week to launch, I would say, Holy Week. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, with Passover and Easter, it's a, it's a great time to put it out, exactly. And the, the, the subhead, I guess, still the best moral code. Are, are you getting arguments on that? Uh, are, there, are there differing moral codes out there besides the personal me, me, I, I moral code that are, that are making an argument to be better? Oh, God. I, uh, <laughs> there are so many moral codes out there <laughs> uh, that, that compete with it. That's why I call it the best. Uh, obviously, the biggest one. Uh, today, as I have said, though this the book is not political, but uh, since you're asking, I, I, I would be dishonest in my own conviction if I didn't say that uh, the, the most dynamic religion of the last 100 years uh, has not been, uh, unfortunately, has not been Christianity or Judaism, and hasn't uh, even been Islam. It's been leftism, which is a religion. It's a secular religion. And, uh, for example, it doesn't divide uh, as... Uh, the Judeo-Christian worldview does, between good and evil, it divides between rich and poor. It's a, it, it, that's, that's a very different way of looking at the world. And we have, of course, the ultimate, which is moral relativism, meaning that there, are, there is no moral truth. Mm-hmm. And that, by the way, there's not a charge that I make. The New York Times had a secular professor of philosophy last month write, for this generation for at least two generations, there is no, has been no moral truth. Uh, a murder may be wrong in your eyes, but it doesn't make it wrong. So you have here, God says, do not murder. That's a big difference then. I think murder is wrong. Mm-hmm. Dennis Prager with us. And actually, let's stay there real quickly on that particular commandment, uh, because I had uh, the uh, the reading, I was a lector at, at my church a few weeks ago, the reading was the Ten Commandments uh, reading, and I got to, uh, to Thou Shall Not Murder, which is what it says in the Bible, and then our, our, uh, our pastor gave the, uh, gave the sermon and was talking about uh, Thou Shalt Not Kill, You Should Not Kill, and I had read your piece, I, I believe up at townhall.com uh, about a month or two ago, which talked about th- this difference between shall not murder versus shall not kill. So I actually printed off uh, your piece and handed it to him. Tell our audience, though, about this difference that you make, uh, and that should be made, between shall not murder, shall not kill. Yeah, it's very sad. Like, I love the King James uh, translation. I love it. But in the 17th century, kill had a slightly different meaning. It meant more murder, as we understand it today. Both Hebrew and I, my, uh, my biblical Hebrew is quite good, and that's where I, I teach this from and have taught it from for decades. The Hebrew and the English both make a distinction in, by having two words for genocide, excuse me, for homicide, mm-hmm. and, and that is murder and kill and in Hebrew as well. And murder is immoral killing. There is moral killing, self-defense, on behalf of of another person who is innocent, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to kill an animal, uh, hopefully humanely, uh, for food. Those are allowed. If people really believed it said, thou shalt not kill, we would have to be pacifists. And the commandment just before that, the fifth commandment, I heard you talk about this with, uh, with Hannity, about the difference between loving your mother and father and what the commandment says, which is honor your mother and father. Yeah, this is why I, I, I want religious people to understand, even if they have taught or learned the Ten Commandments their whole lives, I think the book will be somewhat of a revelation in the very best sense, because it shows how profound the Bible is is one of the reasons I wrote this. We are told to love our neighbor. We are told to love God. We are told to love the stranger. And that's just the Old Testament, where, Mm -hmm. where, of course, the Ten Commandments are found. But we're never told to love our parents, because the, the Bible, if you will, God understands you might not love your parents, and that's okay. We're not telling you what to feel toward your parents. We're telling you how to behave toward your parents. And they're the only people in the world we are told to honor. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Not, Not kings, but parents. 
Dennis Prager is with us. The book, The Ten Commandments, Still the Best Moral Code, available now. It's Riley and Scott on WROK. Uh, the, the first commandment, the most important commandment, and it sets the foundation for the other nine as well. You shall have no other gods before me. Uh, what makes the first commandment the most important commandment? Well, if God isn't the author, if the God of the Bible isn't the author of these Ten Commandments, then why bother listening? Then there are ten suggestions from Moses. So this starts with an affirmation of God, and therefore you can't have other gods. If you have other gods, you have other moralities. Mm -hmm. That's the point. There's the only possible way of having one moral truth, or which is redundant, having moral truth, is if there is one moral God. And, and, and there is. But as soon as there are other gods, and those gods, as I point out in, in the book, uh, we're not talking today about Baal. <laughs> we're not talking <laughs> about stone gods. Uh, and by the way, those gods did have other moralities. Mm -hmm. You want to worship me? Sacrifice children. Child <laughs> sacrifice was universal. Mm -hmm. The first code to ban it is this Bible. Uh, you know, people don't realize... To, uh, the, the utter world-changingness of the of the Ten Commandments and of the Bible generally, and th this would be an example. But we have four, we have other gods. Right? People, there are people who worship Mother Earth, mm -hmm. and, and and the welfare of humans can be sacrificed for the good of the planet. Well, uh, the planet is not a god. Uh, the planet is not a goddess. And uh, there are, and by the way, I I'm an equal opportunity uh, uh, challenger here, because you could even make love into a false god. And people say, why, do you, how could that possibly be? Well, I'll tell you how, the Nazis loved uh, Germany. Love, love can be terrible. It depends what you love. <laughs> Dennis Prager is with us. The book, The Ten Commandments, Still the Best Moral Code. Uh, we, uh, as a society, you, you pointed out uh, a little bit earlier the different moral codes that are out there. Do an, uh, are there still enough of us out there? Are there still enough of us out there who, who put morality, who put being, in, in very basic terms, being a good and decent human being ahead of success, ahead of wealth, ahead of being powerful? Are there still enough of us that dislike being around nice people? Oh, this is a very tough question. Uh, it, it's a very, it's one that's plagued me since I was a child. I mean, to, to put it as, uh, I guess, as plainly as possible, most people really don't ask before they do something, is this right? Uh, they, they do it, and then, uh, you know, there, there was a, when I was on uh, Fox News the other night, they asked me to react to a report of people standing in front of the that building that uh, blew up in, in Manhattan just uh, last week, mm -hmm. and uh, people died, and uh, there were you know visitors standing in front of there taking selfies, you know, just with huge smiles and cracking up like they were standing in front of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and this is, uh, and then they they were embarrassed because the country covered it, and then they said, "Oh God, we weren't thinking." That's exactly right; they weren't thinking. They didn't ask before they do it. Is this a place to laugh and smile in front of for selfies? And it's a little thing, but that life is composed of little things. Mm -hmm. most, most, you know, most of us are not confronting, uh, do you murder this person or not, issues on a daily basis or even ever. So that's, the, that's what it forces you to do, the Ten Commandments. Is it right? Uh, uh, one simple example. Slavery, uh, African slavery, would have been impossible if people simply understood thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal was understood in the ancient world from, and remember, this is 3,000 years old. It was understood first and foremost, you, you may not steal a human being. And then, of course, property. Thou shalt not steal, as I make clear in the book, uh, is is arguably, if someone said to me, Dennis, well, if people could observe one commandment, I would say, thou shalt not steal. Because murder is stealing life, mm -hmm. uh, slavery uh, was stealing human beings, uh, slavery, uh, do, do not steal means that property is sacred, private property. Uh, it's an unbelievable commandment. 
Dennis Prager with us. The Ten Commandments, still the best moral code of the book. I, I might be going a little off the reservation here, but have you watched or do you watch the, the new Fox show, Last Man on Earth? I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it, it's, well, the title kind of explains part of it. There is The Last Man on Earth, and actually it turns out, spoiler alert, there are a few more people around. It's a comedy, and it's supposed to make you laugh. I watch, though, and I see some really interesting... I don't want to say religious questions, but there are, they have examined, at least uh, sideways, the moral implications of how you act when almost literally no one is watching around you. Yes, and, exactly. And, and there's also questions uh, about the work it takes and the questions you have to ask yourself uh, about being a good person. It's easy to be selfish. It's easy just to think about yourself. What does it take for someone to literally work to be a good person. And uh, they don't attack those questions head-on, obviously. It's, it's, it's a Will Forte sitcom. But I'm noticing those themes pop up, and I'm really intrigued by it. Well, one of the things, and this is something this I've devoted much of my life to, to working through these questions, because I, I, since I was five, I've been obsessed with evil, and it, it, it's, it's a troubling way to live, but I'm, I'm generally <laughs> a happy human being. One of the first thing that you have to do is want to be good. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I could prove to your listeners that that is not the case for most people. I have asked parents to ask their children, if your child is five or your child is 50, ask your child this question. What do you think I, your mother, or I, your father, most want you to be, or most wanted you to be, if they're much older now. Happy, successful, smart, good. Again, happy, successful, smart, or good. What do you, not what do you most want. Mm-hmm. What do you think I most want? And I have gotten, this is like 30 years, I have gotten emails, letters, and calls on my show of parents shocked that their kids didn't say good. Hmm. Is happy the most uh, the most frequent answer? That depends on the ethnic group. For example, uh, there were there were ethnic groups where I think successful or smart would prevail, uh, and of course, uh, in the last uh, twenty years or so, you know, oh, I, all I want is a happy kid. Yeah, you know, and uh, well, what if what if your kid is happy? Uh, by getting into a better college through cheating on tests. Not good, <laughs> so to speak. Right. That's All right. right. I, I know you've got to run. This is a really interesting topic. I hope people uh, take advantage of the new book, The Ten Commandments, Still the Best Moral Code. Dennis Prager is the author. It's available now. And also, uh, check out Prager University. You can just Google that, uh, Prager University. Dennis talks a lot about these questions and more there. I, I really enjoy your work, Dennis, both uh, on the radio and uh, and reading your pieces, right. too. Uh, thank you so much for the time today. Well, That means a lot to me. Thanks so much. And hope people run out and grab the new book on the the Ten Commandments. A perfect weekend to do so. Dennis, have a a fantastic uh, weekend. Uh, Happy uh, happy Easter this weekend. And I hope to talk to you again soon. Same to you. All the best.